Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to 333 Motoring. If you're new to the channel, thanks for coming. If you're returning, thanks for coming back. Really appreciate you guys. Um, today's video, we're talking alignment for the E36 M3. I have right here behind me. So what we're gonna do today is we are going to basically build an alignment jig and alignment right here in the garage. So um, I've done a little bit of research on it, so I, I feel pretty confident in, in the process of how we're gonna do it and then how to make more strategic adjustments and not just kind of by feel a couple turns of the, of the tie rods in the front or what have you. So um, that being said, I just bought some PVC pipe. This is one inch, just got it at Lowe's. I think they're 10 foot pieces. I would have preferred eight foot, but I'm gonna make a, a cut to it anyways, and we'll get to that a little bit later on. Um, first thing I did though, is I got, um, let me open this up. <clears throat> I got a strap for this thing so you can lock down your steering wheel. So I basically got a level, picked a point here on either side that were congruent, got it lined up and then I got this thing cinched up pretty tight. Not too, I don't want to put too much stress on the steering column, but at the same time, the steering wheel is locked in place. So now we know that's, that's going to be good. So the first thing I'm going to, the first thing we're going to want to do before we even begin the alignment process is set the camber um, to all four corners of the vehicle prior to alignment. I picked up this little uh, magnetic angle finder from Lowe's for 20 or 30 bucks so we can get our camber set before we really align the toe. Uh, after we adjust the camber, the next thing we want to do is make sure the PSI of the tire is around the hot or the hot pressures that you have on the track. For me, it's 32 PSI. And then lastly, you want to make sure you are on a level surface before we begin. Okay, the first step in the process of building the alignment jig is going to measure the track width of the vehicle front and rear. For me, the rear was 68 inches wide. So you want to make your alignment jig or where the string lays um, a little bit wider than that. So I'm, I'm factoring two inches on each side. So I'm going to make mine 72 inches wide. Now that's just where the string lays. So I'm going to cut this PVC pipe at 80 inches to give me a little bit of room beyond my string line so I can either put the jack stands there or have a little bit of room uh, to adjust this from side to side. So in order to achieve my 72 inch um, alignment jig where the string will lay, I'm going to measure four inches inward on each end of the pipe front and rear. Once I get my four inches, we're going to make a small incision or a notch there, not cut all the way through the pipe, just enough to where the string will lay right there in that notch. That will make sure the string lays true and you can build the same exact size jig each and every time you go to use this thing. This is, that's the, the main function of that. So one last thing is set the jack height so the string line goes through the center of the wheel. Okay, so now we have all the incisions made. You'll notice that I can't, I push the jack stands a little bit outward. I have them as wide as the wheel line on the vehicle. So it keeps this pipe as steady as possible. So what I'm using is I just picked up some random hardware from Lowe's. These are pretty heavy gauge bolts. So enough to keep the string very tight so it's kind of nice actually because once you set it up once you'll have the string already set up onto these bolts so you can easily you know unwind them and wind them up and use it again so what we're doing here is we're squaring up the jig so you need to measure to the same location on each wheel so i picked the center line just below the um the center emblem because that could be pushed in or, or pushed out on, on some of the wheels. So I just picked right underneath that on the actual, um, the rim itself. So I'm taking measurements from side to side, side to side to making sure the rear, both the rear tires are equal measurements on both sides and then equal measurements on the front as well. So the track width on the rear is a little bit wider than the front on this vehicle. Um, I assume that would be the, similar on on other vehicles as well. So you just wanna make sure that the measurements are congruent front to front, rear to rear. And once your jig is square, 
you can go ahead and start measuring your toe on the front and rear location on the rim on the same height and take those initial measurements before we go ahead and start making adjustments. Okay guys, so now that I got the whole jig square now, all right, and I took my initial measurements from the center of the tire. So you can see here, I get it in centimeters. So looking straight down. It's 12 and a half in the front. So excuse me, 11 and a half in the front. Actually here you can see my notes. And then 10 and a half rear. So now I'm taking all my starting toe measurements. So in the rear, I want 1 16th toe in, because that's what I had it set up before when I had the dealership do it, um, which equates to a 1.5 millimeter differential from the rear measurement of the tire to the front measurement of the tire. So you can see my rear tires, they're actually no toe right now, they're actually square. Right side 6.4 and 6.4, left side 6.6, 6.6. So the front is horrible because I did the uh, I did a roll center correction kit install on it and uh, this is the toe is so far it's towed out like an incredible amount so I want the front to actually be square so I'm gonna figure out the adjustments I need to make um, in order to bring these things back to square so that's what we're gonna work on right now now that we have our initial measurements, we're gonna go ahead and start adjusting the outer tie rod on the front and measuring the front and rear of the rim to get our toe back to square in the front. So it takes a little bit of adjusting on both sides here to get it to where we wanna go, but ultimately we got the car dialed in here at 7.5 millimeter measurement, uh, front and rear for both the driver's side Thanks and for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe.